So after moving to America, here are the shocking ways I discovered how Americans raise their kids. So the first one, I was really, really shocked because I just found this out yesterday that American parents use leashes on their kids. Not all parents, but it's only at like really busy spots where if you have a kid that runs away easily, parents might put like a little like backpack leash thing on to keep track of their kids. Wow. That honestly, like that's like unheard of in, in like my culture where I grew up from. So just to hear that, that they actually put leashes like kind of like a pet. It's kind of crazy. It's normal here, but it's not like everywhere all the time. So the second thing is what I discovered that American parents don't bathe their kids every day. So what I found out is the norm is they bathe their kids every two to three days. But I know, we even know of someone who bathed their kids once a week. Like, wow. The weather's Partly. a lot cooler here. Yes, I get that. But they're kids. They are. They they're get... messy. They get dirty, they, you know, so... So, I mean, we do bathe our kids every, every single day. day. Yeah, so that's something that we decided. That's the beauty about it being in a, in a cultural relationship. We can pick and choose the best. So, fortunately, we get to bathe our kids every single day. But just once. So, the next shocking thing is that I found the quality of the food that's been given to children here in America is very poor. I've seen the foods in schools, and also I see what parents usually serve their kids here in terms of just like cereal, stuff that has a lot of sugar and processed, highly, highly processed food. That's one of the shocking ways that I discovered how American parents raise their kids. Yeah, that is one thing I've noticed, just the difference too of, especially when I go back to Malaysia, the, the emphasis is on giving your child the best fresh made food every single day. We're here, there's a lot more like heating food up, it's processed and you're right, the food that they serve in schools is usually packaged, it's usually not very nutrient dense, and it's not as good for you. Mm -hmm. So for our family, we try our best to give our kids the best possible meals, like all three meals. We try to make it as much as possible because it's really a challenge because there is an act, we don't have much access to good food. It's not easily accessible. Like in Asia, usually food that could easily buy on the go for breakfast, lunch, or dinner is mostly processed or it's very expensive. Okay, so speaking of food, Logish actually cooks pretty much all the food for the household, but I like to help out when I can. Since you guys know we are an Asian household, we eat a ton of rice. So I like to help by making rice. And since I'm not a good cook, the only way I can do this well is by using a rice cooker. And I choose the Cuckoo Mycom rice cooker. It has amazing, amazing technology. It has what's called the fuzzy logic technology that makes sure it's cooked perfectly. It's really cool and incredibly easy. But not just rice. I'm actually gonna show you, I can make other things too. I'm gonna start making the boys some breakfast now. Cutting banana. So one actually pretty cool thing about this is it doesn't cook like a pressure cooker. It actually has a hot plate at the bottom that steams and cooks the food from the bottom, which I think is awesome. Right, let's check this out. Oh, it smells so good. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Hey boys, breakfast! <laughs> Which color do you want? Okay. Kai, you're in breakfast, buddy. It's a big bite. Oh, eat a big bite, yeah. So the boys are enjoying their breakfast. One other thing I love about this, as a busy mom, it actually has an auto clean function, which makes my life so much easier. I just love that this whole device is just such premium quality. So you guys, do yourself a favor. If you're in the US or Canada, get yourself a Cuckoo Mycum rice cooker. It makes rice perfect every single time and can make a lot of other dishes like oatmeal. We're gonna leave all the details for you in the description box down below. So one thing I've learned in America is that the parents here allow or, or are okay with their kids addressing elders or older, older people, people older than them 
by their name. So I would address someone like Mr. Cooper, Mrs. Cooper. It's always by the name. And every time I meet someone, they're like, oh, just call me by my first name. Whereas in Asia, where I grew up in Malaysia, we are so used to calling everyone uncle, auntie, uncle, auntie, right? Thank you so much, uncle. Thank you, thank you, uncle. And to a point, sometimes we just don't even know their names, you know, after so long. But it's just like so awkward for me when I met Rachel's dad for the first time. He's like, just call me Tad. I'm like, I, I can't. I just like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Like, how would I do that? You know, so I'm like, Mr. Cooper. And he's like, just call me Tad. I'm like, okay, Dad. Yeah. Again and again, we don't just call adults by their first name. Usually it's Miss or Mr. or Mrs. in front of it. But I think the thing that shocked me actually was that you call even your, your siblings by a different name. Like mm. you say like older sister, you say yeah. Aka, um, yeah. younger brother, Tombi. You don't all. call them by their name. You're only allowed to call someone by their name if they are younger than you. It's so interesting. Because of like the respect, right? So that's, that's the way. Yeah, so like yeah. here even my boys would call, you know, even a teenager by their first name, no mm -hmm. problem. It wouldn't be a thing. Yeah, I, we don't think it's right or wrong either way. It's very cultural. This is yeah. like purely Asian culture and American culture. So it's, it's really unique, but yeah, it's one of the shocking things for me. Okay, this one is a big one. I made a whole video about it. I will link it up here. No, here, somewhere, one of the two corners. <laughs> a whole video about this really shocked me about American parenting that we've had lots and lots of discussions, lots of arguments, lots of debates about this. I don't think we've still come to a conclusion that which one we love the most. This is American sleep training for children. So this is very controversial. We got people who just 100% believe in it and we got people who 100% don't believe in it. So sleep training is teaching kids how to sleep by themselves in their own room, in their own bed or crib. So with babies, you can start about five or six months old, and as old as your kids go, you can train them. <laughs> but the basic concept is that they learn how to put themselves to sleep and sleep through the entire night, mm -hmm. which gives mom and dad time to be together and get a good night's sleep as well. So I, I see the benefits of that, like once we put them in their room and all that by themselves, you know, once they do sleep well, it's great, it's wonderful. We get our time together, we gotta do our things together, we get busy together in our room, you know, they, we've got things, right, we can do ourselves. But growing up in Asia, you know, we view like children as, you know, you don't have a lot of time with them and when they're young, you wanna nurture, you wanna shepherd them, so they're always with you and they sleep with you. And you know, it's a special bond too, right? You sleep with your children and all that. And up till today, I love, I'm always telling her like, let's bring the kids and let's be on the to sleep with them. She's like, no. But I kind of want to know from you guys, what do you think of sleep training? Let us know down in the comments. Is that a good thing? Is that horrible? Is that amazing? Has it worked for you? Let us know. Pros and cons. Okay, another thing, kind of shocking, but I kind of see it, is that it goes along with like American independence, uh, where American parents raise their kids to eat by themselves. I think, I kind of like this. This is the one that I feel like, okay, I can adopt. Because in Asia, we usually hand feed our kids or spoon feed um, until a certain age and then they can eat themselves. But here from young, from like- Six months old. Six months old, they start giving them a little spoon and they try to have them um, eat by themselves. So I've seen the fruit of that. We do that for our children. And right now they're great eaters. They eat really well themselves. It's awesome. So. Again, whatever works for your family, but in my experience, I would recommend that because that gives us a little bit more space that we can enjoy our food while they're eating. Okay, this one is kind of scary and it's kind of shocking to me and I'm really, really sad that this happens in America because of the really, really relaxed gun laws in here. Lots of Americans have access to guns, unfortunately. And there's a lot of killings for guns. So because of that, schools have something called an active shooter drills. Like in Malaysia and Asian countries, we have like fire drills, you know, things like that. If, you know, the building gets on fire, how to run out and all that. But here, kids in schools are raised and trained to adapt or to handle if there's an active shooter that comes on campus, on school. I, it's heartbreaking that kids have to like experience and like be trained to know that someone could come in and try to shoot them. That's really traumatizing and I hate that. I really am so frustrated, but it's unavoidable because that's how it is. 
Yeah, it's important for them to learn. Even Zayden at his preschool has already had to do one. And I want them to have those skills. But at the same time, it's so tragic that that's necessary. Too. Yeah, that they're being exposed to something like that at such a young age. So it is what it is. But uh, yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking. Okay, this other one. This is kind of also like a little bit different. I didn't know this happened here until over time I learned. The fact that in America, parents are the only ones usually responsible for disciplining kids. And whereas in Asia, usually kids get disciplined by groups. So the examples is in Asia, uh, your parents, your school teachers, your uncle, aunties, and all that are usually encouraged and allowed to like discipline kids so that, you know, to correct them if they're doing something wrong, to help them out and all that, right? But here, the default is given to parents. It's actually considered rude to discipline somebody else's kids you, without their permission. Yeah, so they don't really prefer that. And every time like a kid misbehaves or anything, you have to get their parents. You have to, you know, like, like defer to that even even in school, so it's... Yeah, in school, like, there's, of course, course of action, but the parent is always involved in that. So it's not, like, just handled at school, parents are brought into. So in talking about discipline, one of the difference between American parents and Asian parents is that in Asia, spanking is normal, right? Like, I grew up getting spanked, you know, Asian kids get spanked if they're misbehaving and all that. It's getting less and less over time because people are realizing, like, the negative effects of it. But in America, it's always been, like, no spanking, kids get put in timeout. And timeout is something that's utilized to take kids away from the fun thing they were doing and give them time to think and reflect. Um, but I think a big part of it is just having the conversation with your kids about what behavior is expected and not and what they should be doing. You are going to sit on this stool for five minutes. And what exactly keeps me on the stool? Okay, this next thing is somewhat shocking. Uh, the age for toilet training kids. I didn't actually realize this was such a big deal, um, but here in America, it's very common for kids to still be wearing diapers past the age of three up until four. And there's a big emphasis on child-led toilet training. So like, they'll let you know when they're ready. Um, we're in a lot of countries, kids- In Asia. Yeah, a lot of countries in Asia and other parts of the world, they don't even wear diapers or they get toilet trained way, way younger, which I actually like because- We don't want to deal with poop. That's what yeah. it is. Well, I feel like it's easier to break a habit of using a diaper younger versus they've had more years get settled into it. So both our boys That's are potty right. trained by age two, uh, which has worked out great for us. Mm -hmm. For some families it might not, but that's just what we do. So we're on the younger side. So this next thing, yes, it is kind of shocking, but also very, very understandable as you have seen it in movies. American parents raise their kids with a lot of positive encouragement and affirmation. And again, this is gonna be personality wise, but we're a lot about just really rewarding and emphasizing the good things and giving less attention to the bad things. So even in our household, we use a ton of positive praise. I think though it can be taken a step too far that I've seen that Americans will give participation ribbons and even if someone's not doing a good job, we'll still be like, yeah, you're doing awesome. So I think mm -hmm. it can be a negative thing but I think it's just finding that balance of we want yeah. it to be encouraging and uplifting while still letting our expectations be known and make it realistic. I'm usually more like holding back on praises because once you really deserve it, then I'll give it to you. And Rachel's more like, yeah, you're awesome! <laughs> All the time, I love you! But oh. I think they're getting the best of both worlds with that. Okay, so this next thing is kind of shocking to me. I didn't grow up in this sort of like being raised by parents this way is the fact that in America, parents usually send their kids to daycare at such an early age, usually from a baby up to like when they're kids to daycare. Whereas in Asia, we have usually, if we have access to it, we have family watch the kids, you know, while we go to work as parents. And I think part of the reason for that is because in Asia, there's multi-generations of people living in the same household. So that's doable, right? So, and I really, really wanted that so much for my children. And it took me some time to convince her parents. I'm like, hey, come and, come and move in with us. Help with the kids. You get to spend good time with the kids. The kids will enjoy your company. At the same time, you know, we get to give you a house to live in. You know, it's, it works great, right? So I like that. And I'm glad that we get to do it and her parents is on board. Uh, but the vast majority of Americans usually 
and all our friends who are young parents, they're all sending their kids to daycare. Okay, this is also kind of shocking to me. When I'm growing up in Asia as a kid, my parents, whenever we have a school holiday, those are the best times because that's the time that my parents would like plan our vacations, to do stuff, to go travel and see our other family members, hang out with them, with cousins and all that. So it's usually like a lot of family time, a lot of like entertainment, going places, traveling. But in America, in summer, which is usually when the school break is, mm -hmm. parents would send their kids to summer camp. So what is summer camp? So uh, there's two different kinds of summer camp. One is like a day camp where you send kids where they can learn about different activities, play sports, whatnot. And then there's overnight camp, which is usually like a week long and you send your kid away for a week. They stay there, they sleep there, they learn lots of things and then they come home. Uh, I didn't realize that's like an abnormal thing outside of America because that's what I grew up doing. We go to summer camp and it was the best time ever. You, yeah. You're outside and you're having friends. It's awesome. Rachel used to work at a summer camp. I did for many years. So this last one, it's not really like parenting. It's more cultural, I think, but it's still kind of shocking to me. So I'm going to put this in the list is the fact that kids are allowed to go door to door to ask for candy during Halloween. One day a year, I didn't know this wasn't normal. So on Halloween, they go trick or treating door to door and say trick or treat and then people give them candy. Um, I, we don't give our kids candy and our kids have never been trick or treating. I'm not against this, but it is kind of a weird concept. It's, yeah. I don't know, I could deal without trick or treating. I've never actually been, but a lot of Americans love it, do it every year. Um, but you can't do it any other day except for October 31st. So those are some of the shocking ways I, we have discovered how American parents raise their kids. We probably missed a bunch. So let us know down in the comments below if there are other things. But if not, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and we really, really hope to see you in the next video, all right? Bye. Bye.